The hustle and bustle of Tokyo's busy city streets and the rain-swept mountain roads of Hakone were all now but a distant memory. We were leaving Osaka and heading in a westerly direction in what would be the longest leg of our trip. A 750 km journey to the island of Kyushu and the city of Nagasaki. We'd only be in the city for three days before heading on to Kyoto, then Osaka once more before bouncing on to home. Located on the lower slopes of Mount Anasa, the Garden Terrace Hotel and Resort offered incredible views from Nagasaki, a city known for its rich culture, picturesque landscapes, and a history steeped in infamy. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. So, we've just been told that um, it's a free bar, effectively, but we think the bottles in the background are not free, not free. Is that what we're thinking? Dusty old bottles. Dusty old bottles, free. free. Shiny, shiny new bottles. bottles. Not free. Okay. So that's our set for the day. A member of staff met us as we left the hotel to venture down into the city. He seemed somewhat bemused by the fact that we'd rather walk in than get a taxi. The hills surrounding central Nagasaki are a rabbit warren of maze-like steps and walkways, the complexity of which we'd not really appreciated during daylight hours. Our navigational overconfidence would come back to bite us later that evening. Nagasaki has a unique historical and cultural connection with China. This dates back to the arrival of traders and sailors when the city was an important hub for foreign trade and cultural exchange. Chinese immigrants soon settled in the city, establishing Nagasaki Shinchi, one of the oldest Chinatowns in all Japan. In typical fashion, we were simply here for the food. In particular, a local dish with a Chinese lineage simply called Shan Pon. I don't know anything about anything, but it's like really good soup. Really good soup with stuff in it. It's great. Have you got a review? A face will do. Again, instead of doing the sensible thing and getting a taxi or asking for help, we are now walking in the dark and considering going back up the hill on the steps in the dark. As mentioned earlier, getting into the city via the walkways and steps was a simple enough affair in daylight hours. Predictably, in the dark and feeling more than a bit tired, we were now heading in completely the wrong direction. We went the wrong way again. It would seem there's lots of uh, lots of paths, uh, and not all of them are the paths home. 
So I've already run up this hill once just to check it's the right way. <laughs> and we think it is, so I think I'm gonna have a heart attack now, so. Okay, off you go. Retrospectively, I do wonder if the off you go comment was in reference to the walk back to the hotel or my proposed heart attack. Tensions were certainly running high and we may never know. We were heading out to Hoshima Island, located 18 kilometers off the coast of Nagasaki. Otherwise known as Gunkanjima or Battleship Island, the abandoned coal mining facility has now achieved world heritage status, but not without some controversy. Developed and known by Mitsubishi in the late 19th century, Gunkanjima at one time was considered one of the most densely populated places on earth. Its unique and distinctly dystopian atmosphere, Gunkajima has also appeared in a number of movies. Most notably, it doubled as Raoul Silver's secret lair in the Bond outing, Skyfall. During our stay in Nagasaki, it became clear that there's a great deal of local pride in the industrial history of the city, and this includes Gunkajima and the Mitsubishi company as a whole. However, many are critical of Gunkanjima's UNESCO status due to its controversial history. There are accusations of forced labour and inhumane conditions concerning Korean and Chinese labourers during World War II. Although Japan has acknowledged some of the darker aspects of this history, some feel that they haven't gone far enough. Visiting Gunkanjima was a fantastic experience. It is hauntingly beautiful, with a fascinating history that demonstrates both the best and the worst aspects of the human condition. A technical marvel steeped in a complicated history that's certainly worth exploring. Usually, passengers are allowed to disembark and explore a small section of the island, but because of rough waters, we were forced to turn back on this occasion. So you're feeling a bit sad about not going on the island? Oh yeah, no, it would have been nice, but you know. Rather that. Okay. Than being smashed against the rocks. Yeah. yeah. We spent some time exploring Gunkanjima's land-based museum before setting out across the city on foot in search of Maganabashi Bridge. Constructed during the Edo period in 1634, Maganabashi Bridge, also known as Spectacles Bridge, has become an iconic landmark in the city.
Once we'd exhausted the fun of crossing backwards and forwards across the river a few times, we made for Nagasaki Station in the hope of finding something to eat. Really living the dream. I'm excited. Full once more, we set out in search of the Nagasaki ropeway in the hope that we could reach the summit of Mount Anasa before nightfall. We were back on the maze-like footpaths, weaving our way down the hillside towards the Atomic Bomb Museum and Nagasaki's Peace Park.
Established in 1945, the Peace Park, much like the one located in Hiroshima, commemorates the victims of the atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki at the tail end of the Second World War. Standing at an impressive 10 metres in height, the peace statue holds one hand outstretched towards the horizon as a sign of peace, while the other points towards the heavens, symbolising the continued threat of nuclear annihilation. Located just 800 metres from Ground Zero, the Sano Shrine is noted for its one-legged stone tori at the shrine entrance, its remaining leg blown clear by the atomic blast. Two surviving trees at the shrine have seemingly become a living embodiment of both destruction and regrowth. Scorched and stripped of their leaves in the blast, the trees miraculously survived and are now considered a natural monument. The music's calming. Calming. Calming music. Yeah. What's been your favourite thing today? I like you sitting on this big wheel. We also just had a chocolate coolish and that was really good and I don't know what Cranes! To end. Cranes! My excitement over the cranes should in no way diminish the brilliance of the chocolate coolish, by the way. Our hotel is over there beyond the cranes and beyond that rise. That's where we were yesterday in the cable cars up there. Um, and we had the really good ramen dish, Chinese ramen thing, it's over there. So what are your plans for the rest of the day? I'm going to go home and shower and then go for an amazing meal. Okay, sounds like a plan. We should get on that. Mm -hmm. With a history spanning back nearly 400 years, its walls still bearing the scars forged by the drunken sword strikes of revered warrior Ryoma Sakamoto, Kagetsu would be our last port of call in Nagasaki. This is prawn with caviar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's 
tastes like um, it's like beef. So how's it going so far? Mm -hmm. Where was the big obstacle? I just had enormous beef wasabi. Are you okay? Mm. Okay. Is this all mine? Yep, it's all yours. Go for it. Mustard. I'm getting more mustard. I'm saying it. Mm. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. You're all mm. right. You're okay. Okay. Great. I, mean, I never would have done that if they hadn't told us. I'm waiting for this other lady to come back in and go, no, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't put the rice in there. You've ruined it. Hold on. Shiroi Gohan. Hashi. You're showing off. For our very last video, we'd be heading east to Kyoto to spend time in David Bowie's Moss Garden before heading on to Osaka for our final night in Japan. More singing was bound to follow. Mm -hmm.